Hello and welcome. If you saw my last video about GBS8200, you will remember that I actually bought this as I was searching for a cheap solution just to test some of my Hercules, MDA, CGA and EGA graphics cards. As it turned out, GBS8200 was not the right device to do that. If you didn't see that video, please feel free to watch that one first to better understand what I'm going to talk about today and why. So, as I explained previously, GBS8200 can't handle any CGA or EGA signals, but expects RGBS signal with analog color information and composite sync signal with 15 kHz horizontal sync and 50 to 60 Hz vertical sync. This is not what CGA or EGA deliver, but I would like to show what can be done to make it work with the GBS8200. To fully understand the problems, I had to investigate quite a lot. I read the specs of the different graphic standards and had to learn about the history of MDA, Hercules, CGA, EGA and finally VGA. The history is not only very interesting, but often technical decisions were made for historical reasons, for example, just to keep the compatibility. Well, during all these investigations, I stumbled upon a YouTube video by The Restory, which was about pretty much the same story. If you don't know his channel, it is really crazy, funny and informative in the same time. I highly suggest it and will put the link into the description below. I found the work of the Rastery extremely interesting and I'm not going to deny that my solution was heavily inspired by his work. But our ways are still somewhat different, even if the basic idea is actually the same. It is very important to understand some basics about all this. To know all the differences between MDA, CGA and EGA, how colors representation works, for example why brown color is something special on CGA and EGA cards, what is intensity bid for or what differences between 16 and 64 colors modes in EGA. Honestly, first I wanted to explain all that things in this video, but the rest three explained most of it in a better way already than I probably would. So I decided not to repeat it here and I highly suggest to stop now and watch his videos about it first. Otherwise, it will be quite complicated to follow if you are not into the historical and theoretical background, I guess. By the way, just a small remark. I will not only talk about color graphic standards CGA, EGA and VGA, but also about Hercules and monochrome display adapters, or MDA. Hercules was basically MDA with extensions, so I will mention Hercules or MDA both just as MDA in most cases. At this point I assume that you watched my last video and the work of the Rastery on his channel already. If so, you should know that to be able to use GBS8200 with CGA or EGA, we need to do two things, convert digital RGB color signal into an analog value and generate composite sync signal from separated horizontal and vertical sync signals. The crucial idea of the Rastery was to concentrate on the most sophisticated graphics mode, 64 colors EGA, and to implement the conversion to RGBS from there. All the other modes can be easily converted to 64 colors EGA. This idea simplifies the whole thing drastically. Just to recall, 64 colors EGA is defined by six digital signals, red, green, blue and three accordant intensity bits, one for each of the colors. Just as the Rastery suggested, CGA and 16 colors EGA can be easily converted to 64 colors EGA mode by just tripling the intensity signal. For my solution, I went even farther, since MDA can also be converted to 64 colors EGA. MDA can only monochrome with one color and one intensity bit. The intensity signal can be tripled again, just as it was made with CGA and 16 colors EGA. The RGB value is more interesting. Back in the days, there were different monochrome displays. They used white, green or amber phosphor. So, dependent on the used display, monochrome could mean black and white, black and green or black and amber. At least two of these colors can be easily emulated. To get monochrome black and green color, the MDA color signal has to be connected to green output. Red and blue must be always zero in that case. For black and white, the MDA color signal just has to be connected to all three output colors, red, green and blue, since white color means that all three signals are one. Amber is a little bit more complicated, since it must be a mix of colors and intensities, so let's ignore it for now. One important thing about colors conversion left to add. As the Rastery also mentioned in his video, the color brown has to be treated specially. In CGA and 16 colors EGA, half of the colors are the same as the others in dark. As IBM introduced CGA, they added a hack to their displays. Instead of dark yellow, 
The displays had a special circuit which rendered this color brown. Some third-party displays lack not only the intensity inputs, reducing the number of available colors to 8, but many also lack this IBM's unique brown circuitry. So any software which used brown would be displayed incorrectly. If we want to have a proper color representation when converting to VGA, we also have to convert the brown color properly. This was about the RGB conversion so far. Now, what about the second problem, composite sync signal? Well, as the rest re already explained in his video, the composite sync is just a combination of both horizontal and vertical sync signals sent through a exclusive NOR logic. Very simple. Okay, this way we can convert any input, MDA, CGA and 16 colors EGA to 64 colors EGA. But the signal is still digital. How to convert it to analog RGB, which GBS 8200 would understand? Well, I will not reinvent the wheel and just take what the rest re suggested here as well. The simple resistor circuit does the job. It takes the RGB color values and mixes it in relation to third to one third of the input voltage with intensity. If you are interested in digital to analog conversion using some resistors and what cool stuff you can do with it, I suggest to watch my Silly Sound Bastard video, which I made some time ago. Okay, that was the theory. Now we are coming to the interesting part. How to implement all this? Obviously, it would be possible to take a bunch of logic ICs and comparators and build the circuit. However, that would be quite a mess. The Raspberry had a neat idea to encode all possible combinations into an EEPROM to map input color and sync signals to related output signals. This way, any need for special logic fell apart, and he needed only one EEPROM and a bunch of resistors to convert digital color signal into an analog. So far, so good. However, this solution has at least one flaw. One serious problem could be latency. EGA in its high resolution mode runs at about 21 kHz horizontal sync. This means that every line is drawn in about 47 microseconds. With 640 pixels per line, a pixel has to be drawn in about 73 nanoseconds. This is the time in which the used EEPROM has to deliver pixels. Every 73 nanoseconds, one pixel. The rest re used for his solution an EEPROM with 17 nanoseconds latency, as you can see in his video, which is really near the edge. And 17 nanoseconds EEPROM is already a really fast one. Most cheap EEPROMs you can get are far above 100 nanoseconds. This would mean that you should have all kinds of problems if the EEPROM cannot handle the frequency. This is probably why the rest re also has problems in getting high resolution EGA stable during his experiments. Anyway, his solution was still quite cool, but I got another interesting idea. If you saw my video about creative music system, reverse engineering, you will know that I collected some experience with programmable array logic ICs like this one. They are a lot faster than any EEPROMs. With latency below 25 nanoseconds, you can really program them instead of making lookup tables as the rest re did for his experiment, and therefore they are a lot more flexible. To keep it short, this was the first prototype of my MDA, CGA and EGA, or short, MCE adapter. I made it with switches and additional input capacitors to play around with sync stabilization, but I found that the input capacitors are not needed, and I wanted to shrink the PCB a little bit, so I removed the capacitors again and replaced the switches through normal jumpers. This uh, doesn't look so fancy, but makes it easier and cheaper to produce the adapter. I built multiple versions of the adapters with different resistors values and additional capacitors to check which combination ends in the best result. So in the end, I had some of them. And this is the result so far. You can find all the schematics code for the GAL ICs and documentation completely open on GitHub. I will put the link down into the description. Let's take a round trip over the adapter. Here's a 9-pin MDA CGA EGA video input. All the RGB intensity and sync signals are running into the GAL. This IC is programmed with all the logic I told before. It is responsible for sync signal composition, MDA, CGA and 16 colors EGA to 64 colors EGA conversion and brown color correction. Down here are three jumpers, which you can use to select the mode. Jumper 1 is to switch between color and mono mode. When unset, GAL expects MDA inputs and when set, CGA or EGA. Jumper 2 is for color mode selection. When jumper 1 is set to MDA, then jumper 2 selects between black-white color when unset or black-green when set. When jumper 1 is set to CGA or EGA, then jumper 2 selects between 16 color mode 
when unset, or 64 colors mode when set. And last but not least, currently Jumper 3 inverts the composite sync's polarity. Since the vertical sync can be high or low positive, this jumper can help to better synchronize the image. However, I didn't really get too much improvement using it, so consider this as experimental. This jumper can be reused for more interesting applications in the future, like Amber color setting for MDA, for example. Right from GAL, you can see the deck made of resistors. This part is pretty much the same as what REST3 has. I made some experiments and only readjusted some values to get brighter colors and better sync stability, but basically it's the same. Here is another jumper, which you can use to switch between composite and HV sync. This is another improvement over the version of the RAS3, since this allows to use this adapter with other devices than GBS8200, which expects HV sync instead of composite. More about this later. Here is a place for a pin header to grab analog RGBS or RGB HV signal. I thought this could be helpful if I want to measure signals or to use it for internal wiring in case I would like to integrate it into another device like this one. Down here is the standard mini USB connection to power the whole thing and right from it is another header where you can connect 5V power supply. And last but not least, here is the 15-pin VGA compatible output connector. Unfortunately, this video is already very long, and I think I'll do a cut here and continue with practical tests and showcases in the next and probably last part of this series. I still hope you enjoyed it so far. Please don't forget to leave your feedback below, likes, dislikes, comments, whatsoever. Please feel free to take a look at the MCE Adapter Project site, and I hope to have you on my channel again to see the continuation. So far, thank you and goodbye.